The RENA User Group, or RUG for short, is a group of IT professionals working with a communication service provider in Japan to build real use cases for a RENA network planned to deploy in February of 2021. Our charter is to have a real use case on this network by March of the same year. The RENA project. Build a business continuity network. Solve the problems of the existing IP network. Prove the commercial viability of RENA, compatible with Ethernet, compatible with Internet, and leverage RENA's advantages. Out-of-band control, support for the Internet of Things, support for cryptocurrency, designed for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The RENA user group continues to test in a dedicated RENA lab. Currently successful tests of video of RENA have been achieved. Experimentation continues with different RENA stack implementations, investigating RENA as an alternative to TCP IP, Irati, Rlight, Pristine, Arcfire, also, the lab continues to evaluate RFC 7426, software-defined networks. One of the goals of the RENA users group is Ouroboros over RENA. Deploy RENA nodes in Tokyo using DWDM waves over a proven network architecture in the core of the internet by February 2021. Currently, the RUG is evaluating a solution for 25 gig waves the cost of four servers with accessories is about 20,000 US dollars for the Cardano nodes on a 25 gig Dell PowerEdge 640 solution, including DWDM transceivers, DWDM MUX, power, and rack space required. My name is Jesse Lau, president of the RENA User Group. I would like to share my personal journey with you because showing how RENA networking principles could improve the world around us may help others understand our urgency, which means to you that we have a chance to get out ahead of TCP IP pitfalls of scaling, security, mobility, and speed now that we have the chance to do so comfortably before it becomes an emergency, skyrocketing both the monetary and human costs. In the mid-90s, as a young adult in the military on Okinawa, I was immediately and brutally introduced to the inherent TCP IP security issues when I first got a dial-up connection. Within the first week of joining the internet, I went up against the wrong chat troll and paid dearly for it. This guy was on another level. He flattened me to the point where I had to cancel my internet and literally move up to another place so I could get assigned another address where he couldn't find me got hit with an endless barrage of dodgy net send messages, DDoS attacks, ping of death attacks, all directed at my IP address. Left the military and chat trolls behind and moved on to the civilian sector and as a sales professional and found myself constantly struggling with our VPN system that was disrupting the business by making things way more complicated than they need to be. After that, I moved on from sales to focus on engineering, becoming a direct digital controls DDC system architect, eventually designing and directing the installation of a campus-wide C++ logic-based system running the largest U.S. base in the Pacific. To further define direct digital controls meaning, these systems can monitor, control, log, analyze, and then optimize nearly anything, including but not limited to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, aka HVAC, lighting, water, electrical, camera, security, and fire systems. This is where I first learned of the scaling issues inherent to TCP IP because now every air conditioner, electrical meter, and a lighting system needs an IP address. These systems are amazing. They're capable of enhancing quality of life, safety, creating huge energy savings. However, in my opinion, due largely to TCP IP scaling and security failings have limited adoption. There is always a concern of someone hijacking your systems from the TCP IP side. There's also, going back the other way, during the big Target retail store's credit card system hack, the bad actor gained access to the mechanical room and was connected to their air conditioner. Unfortunately, security through obscurity is functionally the only model for the controls market space, which drives up the cost and leaves most of the world behind the curve, which is a real shame because direct digital control brings lifestyle changing automation with huge energy cost and labor savings, which means to you with RENA these things could be available to everyone, but now it's largely limited to big campuses and big business.
Later in life, I transitioned from controls engineering and moved into the network engineering profession. With wireless systems, three-dimensional three propagation mapping, wireless TCP IP network design, then later acting as the Japan-wide manager for a, a large wireless communication system account serving the U.S. Department of Defense. With all the advances in wireless technology today, using space-time multiplexing as one example, the industry as a whole has already outpaced the TCP IP model because mobility multi-homing is only partial and overly complex in its paradigm, which means to you the full support of multi-homing inherent to RENA can solve these mobility issues, reducing complexity and the cost while raising the reliability of wireless systems, perhaps even bring completely new, undiscovered capabilities to the medium. Recently, I have been out of the traditional workplace and focused on entrepreneurial efforts. Some of the long-term business models I have investigated involve fleet management and AI self-driving development. The same TCP IP limitations and overhead issues that afflict the wireless networking industry apply here, but now with even higher stakes as the risks of multi-homing network failures and lag and self-driving cars and drones are potentially fatal. As more and more people get a smartphone, a drone, a self-driving vehicle, requiring networking, and then go connecting everything in their home, their office, their farm, their campus, their factory, you name it, this is going to get more convoluted and cluttered. What is the need for scalability? The current IP version 4 global routing table is approaching 1 million routes in the core, and IP version 6 is already up to 100,000 core routes, and they are not up to the task. A third-party server is still needed to map addresses to names. Rena can scale for, for you with the routes, bandwidth, namespace management, network element, distance, because of decentralization principles, which means to you that Rena could conquer these and future network engineering challenges. Hi, my name is Jason Durham. I served in the United States Marine Corps as a fixed siphony repair technician, also known as a crypto tech, maintaining both secure voice and data communication systems. My position within the RENA user group is crypto outreach. Recently, within the Catalyst Idea Scale, I submitted a proposal for the Ouroboros over RENA, which we hopefully, hopefully will be funded over funding rounds two and three. I also own a data center in Mariana Lund, Sweden, called Nordic Co-Location Computing AB. I am also part owner in a Cardano stake pool which is called Hash Valley, which is hosted in Paris, France, with relay nodes in Paris, France, Dallas, Texas, and Tokyo, Japan. How does RENA reduce complexity? We need to reduce the complexity of specialized standards into common policies and mechanisms. This will result in simpler network operation and management focusing on application performance. RENA is a simple structure where layers are not a unit of modularity. They are layers of resource allocation where different layers can have the same functions but different policies. Layers then become as black boxes, as in independent scopes, and eliminate inclusions such as MPLS, 802.1AQ, VXLAN, GRE, QNQ, IPSEC, and other shims. The resultant common simplicity also impacts protocol design by reducing the development cost. Hi, my name is John Yildirim. I work for GLBB Japan Research and Development Laboratory as a software engineer on experimenting with RENA and its advanced deployment scenarios. As the complex problems that rock crypto outreach members, specifically mentioned related to networking, still continue to exist today, we are all determined to give powerful solutions to them on their way here at GLBB, proving we share a common vision of the Cardano IOHK community that how beautiful it is to develop and deploy advanced technology that makes a real impact on our world and how we live. And because of that, we seek and sponsor commercially viable idea owners to help them develop and integrate their use case scenarios, RENA networks to make them perfect while we learn from the process and advance on RENA internally to eliminate any possible problem of ours, our large-scale RENA deployment use cases and scenarios in the future. For the record, we are planning to work on technologies like advance in state-critical infrastructure security and resilience, extreme real-time communications, and the tactile internet. ICN-based content retrieval, vehicular internet, and infotainment. And finally, machine-to-machine -machine communications over RENA 
decide to carry that out. Thank you for listening. How does RENA improve network management? Today's management is fragmented with no single API and no taxonomic structure for a dynamic directory of objects. External routing registries, external RPKA servers, static route maps, and filters are all used to manage a million IPv4 addresses. And in the end, addresses doesn't matter. On the RENA network, objects properly enroll and are properly managed. My name is John Cherry. I'm responsible for agriculture outreach in the ARENA Users Group. I have decades of experience and work in research in Southeast Asia. I've noticed the proliferation of TCUIP basic technologies in some of the most report, remote parts of Cambodia, Thailand, and the Philippines. While TCPIB based services have provided the people in these developing areas the benefits of a globalized economy, RENA offers a critical opportunity to achieve greater development and prosperity. How does RENA provide quality of service? The quality of service models in place today are inconsistent between layers and with different models at each layer. RENA presents a uniform quality of service policy on all segments and properly identifies congestion and addresses it with a uniform mechanism. Hi, my name is Jim Erickson. I've been working in the crypto space for over five years, especially focused on the crypto exchange business. Recently, I have been exploring the DeFi space and problems like front running and latency have been issues for years. I came across Rena and I'm interested in how it solves these problems. How does Rena fix current internet mobility and multi-homing issues? Today's internet lacks names for applications and they are found mostly by well-known ports which introduces security issues directly to the application. We use domain name systems to map IP addresses to interfaces. No application directory exists. Domain names and just synonyms for IP addresses. In RENA, even the layer themselves have names and we can establish taxonomic domains by de design and not a complicated overlayer with well-known security vulnerabilities. Naming the application and not the interface gives us true multi-homing and mobility without workarounds as we do in the existing internet. Hi, I'm Gary Blankenship, Chief Technology Officer for GLBB Japan. I serve in the capacity as technical advisor for the RENA user group. Uh, when we look at the existing internet today, it has a lot of problems that we talk about a lot and we also throw a lot of manpower to fix these problems. One of the problems is security. With security, we have a whole group of security professionals that are focused on protecting the internet from vulnerabilities that were built into the design of the internet. We have literally created an entire job space uh, for security professionals that does not need to exist. In the RENA world, we don't protect IP addresses, we protect names. So it is very simple and very ergonomic for humans to manage instead of having to remember IP version 4 or IP version 6 addresses. What are the security benefits of RENA? Um, the security benefits of RENA are many because you have a fragmented security model today where there's no single security model uh, that addresses all the faults. And what we do see is that the port allocation in TCP IP has combined with well-known ports. So the ports are now the application ID or endpoint end ID or the port ID. So basically you're advertising the application to everybody on the internet, whether you want to or not. So therefore we have a new industry of firewalling and filtering and trying to uh, fix these attacks on our infrastructure that is open by default. In RENA, an application cannot just join the network, it has to enroll in the network and it has the uh, port ID or the endpoint identifier is the application uh, and is not advertised as a well-known port throughout the rest of the internet which makes it a well-known attack vector.